The War Within Alpha is here and today we're going to be looking at the first hands-on experience with gameplay of Clash Reworks, Delves Dungeons, a lot of UI improvements and more and also if you want to be a part of the testing get your hands in, send in that feedback, make sure to check warwithin.blizzard.com and sign up for that access really quick. Although we're not really sure yet if this is going to be coming with the pre-patch for War Within or just with the live release of the expansion, the first thing you're going to see while you're logging into the game is the War Band, which is one of the features coming with War Within and it looks freaking amazing seeing your characters all around the campfire and selecting your ideal one to log in with. So far, what we've tested with the War Band is we only have a total of four favorite characters that you're probably going to be selecting and including in this little box here that holds your actual warband alt and with this we're going to have an increase in character slot as well we've known this for a while now i'm not sure if this is going to be expanded to include more there is a problem with it with showing too many alts on your screen because it just probably will get a little bit more crowded although it would be cool to see different warband screens with different sections of alts or different groups of alts so far in the alpha and most likely as it's going to be coming close to release we're only going to see the best four that you will personally choose to be your favorite now although it wasn't actually available to be tested in the very early stages of this alpha we did have the opportunity to ask questions to the devs maria hamilton and holly longdale as to how their design philosophy revolves around unlocking a lot of the stuff account wide for everybody because this is the main attraction for the warband where you just don't have to do the story again, don't have to get the same achievements again. The major thought process behind this is if it makes sense for your alt to not have to do it again because you've already done it, like certain achievements can be account wide. Some of them probably feats of strength might still be character specific. They will just take that feedback into consideration when they further develop the warband and what actually is going to be free for all of your characters and uh, restricted to specific alts. We're not going to get too deep into the actual questing as you load into the zone because with most if not all of the alpha we don't have access to cinematics. We're just thrown in into the zones which the first one is Isle of Dorne. I'm going to get back to that in a second. But since we're still on the warband section you will notice if you've done this quest already and my account that I've played through it has that when you approach a quest, first of all, the icon will be gray and it will tell you your warband has already completed this quest most likely to signify that you know this is something that you can skip or you don't have to do it again because you already did it or in the other option is to actually do it again if you want to play through a repeatable version so giving you all of the option to en engage with the content the way you want to whether it is to skip it if you don't care to regrind or request the same story again and again and again on all of your alts or to keep doing it if that's part of your gameplay experience that you want to get through with the war within and just a quick side note although i don't know if we're going to be able to show this on screen since it wasn't part of the game but it was part of the presentation that we were privy to there's going to be an overhaul of quest icons which in the early alpha we didn't have access to because they weren't all implemented just yet and you'll be able to filter through all of your quests worldwide and actually figure out what the quest is by just looking at the icons this is, this is like a small ui overhaul where you can definitely make a big difference between repeatable dailies main campaign quests and one particular icon that you might have seen in the live game definitely the first time that i was aware of it because it, it's already in the game was with the wow remix section is the pink triangle upside down triangle quest marker that indicates an important quest from what we know and that's going to be coming in war within this will be related to profession quests to separate content not necessarily the main campaign but something related to the game mechanics to the systems to things that you need to be aware of going to the new expansion all synthesizing in a much more visually coherent experience for you to understand exactly what you're doing and maybe what you want to be doing with the new questing system and since we kind of are squeezing it into the UI section of the alpha and what War Within comes. Obviously, we're going to be having UI improvements to a lot of the things. And some of them that we were able to test were related specifically to the talents and the spellbook, which we already knew about from BlizzCon, but now it actually can be played with. And the feeling is amazing to open up your spellbook and actually see more than like six eight, ten icons, however many we have now, and see them all spread out across your screen in a more modern RPG fashion and what's cool or maybe not, but you can actually see the spells from the other specs of your class as well. 
Which, I don't know if it was necessarily intended, but it did give the sense that, oh, hey, listen, and if you want to play this spell, you gotta swap to this spec. That's the general feeling that the graphical representation, at the very least, of the talent icons gave to me. And obviously, without having to say it again, it just makes going through all of your icons, whether it is general abilities, dragon flying, or what's going to be known as dynamic flying icons, or actual spell icons, or class icons, or anything like that, it's all going to be there and much easier to browse and set up on your bars. And one cool thing that we were able to notice is that since there's no need for the spellbook to be like a separate UI interactable button or it doesn't need one anyway. You now have an extra button at your main mini menu bar at the bottom right, depending on how you have your UI set up. That's going to be the profession one. Just a little quick uh, note here. We didn't test professions yet, but it is there and it's going to change a little bit how you interact with your character. In terms of the new zone and the questing with it, it's very limited in what we have access to because probably they don't want us to give a lot of spoilers to the story and everything. The cinematics are particularly just text-based information. This is going to happen. That character is going to be talking with that character. A big explosion, boom, you're going to the other city or whatever. That's generally the cinematics that we're going to have access to. Other than that, it's just regular, you know, get into the new zone. These are the new people there. These are the new enemies. It's an intro quest, which is fine. The quests are okay, but the Isle of Dorne is the first zone that you're going to be encountering in the new expansion and the first one that we have had access to while testing it. And it is amazing considering that we're going to be approaching this with a dragon riding or dragon flying or dynamic flying, how it's going to be called in the future mechanic in mind which is a stark contrast to how we have the Dragonflight zone since at least Isle of Dorne, although it's very big and we did have access to a big section of it, it doesn't feel like it has that much verticality like, uh, let's say, Waking Shores had for Dragonfly when you were introduced to the Dragon Riding system, which we're just for ease of access, we're going to call Dynamic Flying since that's generic. Now we're going to have all of it unlocked from the moment that we step in onto the Isle of Dorne. And the first capital that we're going to be getting into because we're going to be Seeing dwarfs left and right is Dornagal, and dwarfs are going to be a big, big, big factor of the story into how we're going to be progressing through War Within. This is going to be our capital city as well as we work towards releasing it from the Nerubian infestation and attacks that's going on. Once again, we don't know what the story entails. We just see bugs, we squish bugs, and that's it. Delves are also a very much anticipated feature of the War Within, and obviously everybody has questions about it, and we've had the opportunity to test the first one, which comes in very early into your questing zone, kind of like 20, 30 minutes into the story progression, you're going to meet Bran and Bran is going to be taking you into the Delves. Now, if you haven't seen anything regarding War Within and you don't know what Delves are, Delves are essentially the new system of War Within. Think of them as a combination of dungeons and Torghast in the way that they play. Now, you might hear Torghast and might have reservations, but hear me out. It's most likely not what you think. The reason we're comparing them to a cross between dungeons and Torghast is because as far as dungeons are concerned, the layout is fairly similar where you go from room to room, you clear trash, you beat a big boss at the end, the mobs and enemies progressively get stronger and stronger as you go forward and at the end you just get fat loot. That's as much of a dungeon as anything can be. Torghast in the sense that we can probably say Torghast, we can probably say Plunderstorm, or we can probably say Cobalt Assembly, is that you have actually access to powers as you progress to the dungeons. Here in this footage, when Marcelin was just killing a big ass mushroom, he got a double jump effect and an extra heal on his mechanics. And going through further deep into the delve, he unlocked further powers like a one minute divine shield and a big stat increase overall. There's probably going to be a all sorts of powers that you can go through, most likely making the content replayable, repeatable, and having a different flavor each time you approach the delve. Now, the delve is essentially a cave. When you first encounter it, whether you do it through the quest storyline as it gets introduced to the mechanic, or just seeing them in the open world at max level, like it's going to be intended to be engaged with, you're going to see like this entrance covered in fog, and then you just clear the fog and you go in and you are in your delve and of course Bran will associate you in. And this is a very important part of the mechanic because Bran acts as a follower assistance type thing and it can actually fill a specific role depending on what you play. Because if you play something like a healer 
or a tank, you might want Bran to fill up what's left to be done. For instance, Bran can be a healer or a DPS and it will help you along the way. There are all sorts of abilities that Bran will be have access to as Bran levels up through the encounter and they slightly differ between combat and healer at the moment. We're not sure if these exact abilities are going to remain until the release of the expansion, but you can see that most of them are similar. Bran is essentially what we would consider a hunter. He has a gun and he shoots things, but he occasionally has some helpful abilities if you opt to have Bran as a healer or DPS abilities if you go for the combat route. And as you progress through the delves and through the system, you'll unlock more stuff like trinkets and further customizational options for Bran to give you the sense of an RPG. When you go into your delve, you'll also see that it has tiers and within the first level of alpha and most likely up until you get to level 80, you'll have access to the first two tiers. The first one would be the normal version of the delve, which has close to probably no difficulty as you're going through your leveling process. Tier two will get slightly more difficult and it goes up and up and up until so far we have 10 tiers. And in the interview that we've had access to, we know that they're essentially in terms of their design philosophy, they want the tier 10 difficulty delves to be kind of on par with the mythic plus 10 difficulty dungeon, both in terms of the actual skill required to clear the delve, but also in the rewards that you get. Now, this is not set in stone, so it is subject to change, but at least we know where they're thinking of this delve system to be, considering that the plus 10 that we have now in Dragonflight is equivalent to a plus 20 that we've had in previous seasons. So we can probably assume that the delves is going to be a parallel endgame system to acquire gear and do other stuff, most likely not replacing Mythic Plus, but being a side op. And all of this because delves will also contribute to your vault rewards in the end, since we've known this uh, from BlizzCon, while the PvP vault system will be having its own separate thing with vendors. And of course, with delves, we'll still have dungeons, and the one that we've been able to test in the first version of the alpha testing was the Rookery, and it's what well, you probably imagine from a dwarf type dungeon. It's going to be located in the Isle of Dorne. It's one of the first ones that you have access to. And if I'm not mistaken, it's even in the actual capital city. We were able to queue and kind of go through the mechanics. We didn't unlock it through the story just yet. But in terms of the dungeon, it definitely looks like a very intro friendly dungeon. It has very basic mechanics. Although obviously we've only tested the initial version of the alpha. Things might change by the time you actually get your hands on it. But it looked really cool. We're outside, we're fighting all of these bad dwarfs, which you're going to find out about as you go through the story. And there's a lot of void shenanigans going around. And you're going to be flying on the Storm Griffin, Storm Riders, whatever they're called, and it's pretty cool. And you go deeper into the mountain, it gives you a big kind of Hobbit slash Lord of the Rings feeling as you dive deeper into the mountain and fight dangers beneath. But overall, it's a refreshing change of pace. We didn't get too deep into the dungeon system since we only had time to check out one of them. And it's the basic version of it. It's not Mythic Plus, it's not with all fleshed out mechanics, but it's looking good and a nice change of pace from the Dragonfly dungeons. And last but not least, something that's probably on a lot of people's minds are the class reworks. In this wave of alpha testing, with what we've had our hands on, we know that Warrior, specifically Fury and Arms, are going to be reworked. We already had access to the talents and I've played through a bunch of them and I'm gonna tell you how awesome it is. Druid as well with Balance Feral Resto, Paladin with Retribution Holy, Evoker with Preservation and lastly Monk with Windwalker and Mistweaver and a bunch of classes with their class talent tree also changed as well. We're gonna have videos on all of these individually so you know exactly what to expect and where the spec is going for and don't, don't fret, you're going to be seeing these class reworks expanded to probably all of the classes because from the ones that we've been able to test, it's very obvious that the intention of the class rework, as always, is to kind of make the design choice concise, make the class play well and feel well and be fun, but also to facilitate the implementation of the hero talents. Because as we know, particularly with Warrior that you're seeing right now on the screen, Shockwave is a big important ability for the hero talents and it's been moved from a capstone, which was a controversial choice to begin with to something a little bit more in the middle and if we're going to be taking the hero talents as an example not going to dive too deep on it it's very clear that they're fixing a lot of the issues with talent distribution where the utility is where the defensives are where your damage is coming from and making everything feel less annoying to pick and with fewer talent choices to spend on exactly what you want to get and of course fury is getting blade storm more on that on our fury video 
over the last couple of expansions, we've tested a plenty of alphas before, and we have to say that having access to the earliest version possible of the alpha, this is a lot of stuff in the game, and a lot of stuff is working really well for it being an alpha stage. And what this essentially says, if you are curious for a little bit of a a hook, a meat, a something to drag you into the game or to reassure you that War Within has the potential to be an amazing expansion is this. This is going a lot faster than we've known in past expansions. They're doing a lot more work with a lot more people and listening to a lot more feedback than before. And if this isn't enough, then I don't know what is. Because WoW gets more modern with each passing patch, each passing year, each passing expansion. And in 2024, WoW is different and the players are different. And you can see how different they are in our video that we just did the other day and you might be surprised at what you're going to find out.